Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for our webinar about Mini PCR Bio's Molecular Rainbow Lab. I'm Alex Danis, and I'm going to be walking you through the lab today, which is going to help introduce students to characterizing and separating molecules, as well as introduce them to gel electrophoresis, which is a fundamental biotechnology technique. So Mini PCR Bio is a biotechnology equipment company, and we make equipment that helps to bring biotech into places where it's never been before. So this can be an educational setting, this can be out in the field, or this can even be up on the International Space Station. And I really like to talk about why I personally work with Mini PCR Bio. So in my AP Biology class, we all got on a bus, we traveled about 45 minutes down the road, and we were able to do a little electrophoresis lab. And we just loaded dyes into a gel. And holding that pipette, I had this moment where I thought, I want to do this every day for the rest of my life. And so Mini PCR Bio is all about having those experiences earlier and getting students introduced to biotech equipment earlier. So I really enjoy working with them for that. And I think this lab that we're going to talk about today is really so close to that experience that I had. So I'm excited to introduce you to it so that you can help walk your students through it. So we're going to go through four main things today. I'm first going to introduce you to our Rainbow Lab. We're going to get a demo set up and running so that it'll go while we're talking through things today. Then I'm going to introduce you to Bandit. This is the newest addition to Mini PCR Bio's electrophoresis family, and you're going to get to see how it works today. Then we're going to go through some curriculum materials, so things that you can use in your classroom to help introduce your students to electrophoresis. And then finally, in real time, we're going to go through the results of our Rainbow Lab. So I'm really excited to walk through this. So one of the reasons why we're doing this today is because we want to make something called gel electrophoresis more accessible for students. So if you're familiar with DNA, if you're familiar with gel electrophoresis, you might have seen an image like this of horizontal bands on a gel. So gel electrophoresis is a really important tool to be able to separate and characterize DNA molecules. And again, we're going to walk through some curriculum material later that talks about the processes that make gel electrophoresis work. But I think what's important to know right now is that electrophoresis is one of the most commonly used methods of visualizing DNA samples and separating them. And the ability to do this allows uh, researchers and scientists to be able to identify people based on DNA, to be able to diagnose genetic diseases, and to run almost every scientific experiment in the genetics lab. You will almost always have to do some sort of uh, visualization and gel electrophoresis. So it's a really important tool. Now, there are a couple of different properties that you could think of that DNA has when we're talking about separating DNA molecules and characterizing them. One, of course, is the sequence of those DNA molecules. So thinking about the actual sequence of the A's, T's, C's, and G's in your DNA. But what gel electrophoresis does is it separates the DNA based on a really physical property, which is the size or length of that piece of DNA. And that might sound a little unusual, but I bet you're very familiar with separating uh, other things by size. And we'll get to that in just a second. But the important part to think about here is that DNA is just a molecule. And we know that molecules come in lots of different shapes and sizes, and I mean that quite literally. So on the left here, we have a tiny little water molecule. It is made up of only three atoms. Then we have a sugar molecule, which is a little bit bigger. Then we have a steroid molecule, which is even bigger still. And you can think, too, uh, about something like DNA, which is going to be even bigger. So this is a DNA molecule over on the right. And you can see that it's massive when we compare it to just that little water molecule. But even this is just a small, small snippet of DNA. So molecules can come in really wide varieties of sizes, from really small to really big. They can also have other important properties. They could have different charges. So again, when we think of a polar water molecule, you might remember that it has a positive charge on one side and a negative charge on the other. Some molecules have an entire overall charge, so you might have a negatively charged or a positively charged molecule. So you, there are all these different characteristics that you can separate molecules by. And again, you're probably really familiar with separating things based on their characteristics and separating mixtures. So you might do this often in your kitchen when you're straining pasta out of water. So what you're really doing here is you're separating a mixture. You're separating solids from liquids. And so you're using some characteristic of the components of that mixture to separate out multiple parts. 
but this isn't the only way that we can think about separating mixtures based on their properties. So you might also think about something perhaps like a magnet, where you can use a property of pieces of metal, either being magnetic or ma not magnetic, and use a magnet to separate those uh, components of the mixture, to separate those potential molecules from each other based on magnetism. And if we want to get a little bit more molecular, if we want to get a little bit more sort of science labby, you can also think of something like a paper chromatography lab where you can separate uh, molecules within something like a spinach leaf or some pine leaves based on their polarity. And so as they separate out on that piece of filter paper, you're actually separating them based on some intrinsic characteristic. And so that's what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be separating mixtures. We're going to be separating mixtures of molecules based on some properties of those molecules. And by doing that, we're gonna really understand the fundamentals of how gel electrophoresis separates DNA molecules based on their properties and characteristics. So that's what we're gonna do in today's lab. Students who perform this lab are gonna use gel electrophoresis to be able to characterize and separate molecular mixtures. They're gonna really understand the fundamentals of gel electrophoresis as a biotechnology method and as this sort of uh, technique. And they're also gonna be able to connect some physical science processes to the biology lab. And so these are gonna be at sort of an overall engineering level, but they're also gonna be at the level of thinking of things like charge and shape and size when it comes to molecules not just a sort of things that we think about in the physics lab. So what we're going to do today is we're going to characterize some molecules that we have in these tubes here. So I have six tubes and they each have a different dye in them. And the first characteristic that you're going to be able to really clearly separate these dye molecules on is their color. So that is a really obvious characteristic that we can say, okay, these six molecules, uh, in these tubes all have one really distinct different characteristic. They're all different colors. But through this lab, we're also gonna be able to characterize the charge of each of these dyes, the composition of these dyes. So are they made up of just one type of molecule or multiple types of molecules? And we're gonna be able to say something about which of these dyes is smaller or larger than the other. And we're gonna do all of this using gel electrophoresis. Now again, we're gonna walk through the actual fundamentals of this in just a minute, but I wanna make sure that we get this demo started, we get things rolling. And so the first thing I'm gonna do right now is we're gonna to switch to my benchtop setup and we're gonna load our dyes into our gel electrophoresis setup. So here over here, we have uh, our little gel electrophoresis box. This is our Bandit gel electrophoresis kit from Mini PCR Bio. We're going to talk all about this in just another second. But before we really get into the specifics here, I want to make sure we can load our dyes into this gel and start walking through this lab. So what I'm going to do uh, is first, I'm going to add a little bit of electrophoresis buffer to this gel. And that, of course, is going to be very important uh, when we talk about how electrophoresis works. So I've just added a little bit of electrophoresis buffer. And now I'm going to use a pipette to add 10 microliters of each of these dyes into these wells in the middle of the gel. And if you're familiar with gel electrophoresis, you might notice that it's a little unusual that our wells in our gel are in the middle. And we're gonna talk all about that in just a minute. But the first thing that I wanna do is load these dyes into this gel. And we're gonna do it in our rainbow order. So we're gonna start off with 10 microliters of our red dye. This is gonna go into our first well. Then we're just gonna go right in color order. We're gonna add our orange dye next. And this is one of our little uh, standard size pipettes from Mini PCR. So this pipette is a fixed volume of 10 microliters. So that is 10 microliters of our orange dye that I've just added in there. Next, of course, we're going to go from red to orange to yellow. We're going to add 10 microliters of our yellow dye. Oops. Right into our gel. After yellow is going to come our green dye.
after green is going to be blue. And finally, in our last foil, is going to be our purple dye. Okay. So now you can see that we have our rainbow right here in our little Bandit Gel Electrophoresis box. And what I am going to do is I'm going to connect our electrodes to our two uh, leads here. Let me make sure I don't pull this off the desk. So we have connected our electrodes and we'll be able to see that it's working because we have little bubbles that are starting to form here. I'm gonna take my webcam and bring you in a little bit closer here. So you can see that there are bubbles starting to form at that back wire on the gel at that negative electrode. And so now we're going to see what happens to our dyes. So we're going to leave those to keep running. We're going to come back to our presentation. All right, so those are going to run for about 10 or 15 minutes. We'll check back in on them in a moment. But what you'll notice is that we are using a really cool little gel electrophoresis box. So this is our bandit. So Bandit is the newest addition to the gel electrophoresis family from Mini PCR Bio. The idea behind Bandit is that students get to assemble it themselves. They get to put the box together. It comes with the uh, well. It comes with those electrodes, electro dams, um, some little circuitry boards so that you can actually build a circuit and see how the physical processes of electricity, of uh, creating an electrode on two sides of a conductive buffer, actually come together to help create this electrophoresis system. The idea is that by putting it together and by understanding these fundamentals, students are gonna really, really understand the technology. They're not just gonna show up and start loading dyes into a gel like I did here. They're gonna understand the fundamentals behind it and they're gonna take that knowledge and understanding with them to the rest of the biotechnology that they encounter in their lives. So again, Bandit comes in a number of different pieces and students can assemble it together to put together their own gel electrophoresis system, but they also don't have to. You can also assemble Bandit once, keep it together, and then have students just use it as a box. It's really sort of uh, moldable to what you need in your classroom. The other nice thing about Bandit is that it's a much more affordable option than something like a pre-made electrophoresis box. And so you may have thought that you couldn't do electrophoresis in your classroom, that it might be cost prohibitive. And Bandit is our uh, answer to that, that you can do this in your classroom. We've made it really accessible and we've added in these principles of design and engineering and made it modular so that you can add those things into the curriculum if you want, but you can also just set it up and let your students run it. So it's a really cool new tool and I'm excited that we get to see it in action today. Now, Bandit is an electrophoresis box, so we're going to talk through some of our curriculum materials of how you can talk about electrophoresis in your classroom with your students. So, of course, if we think about electrophoresis as a word, we can break it apart into two parts. The first part is electro for electricity, and the second part is phoresis, which comes from the ancient Greek for being carried. And this is really what is happening in electrophoresis, is that some type of electric field is carrying molecules through some sort of material. So an electric field causes charged molecules to move through a gel. Now, that gel that we're going to be talking about today that you saw me add the dyes into is made out of agarose. And I have an agarose gel here that I can sort of hold up to the camera and show you. I'm just going to put a glove back on. And so this right here is a pre-made agarose gel that I just made about an hour ago. And so you can see that it's kind of like a firm jello. It's a little bit squishy. It's a little bit cold, um, but it is really a lot like jello. And the idea is that if you zoomed way in on this, what you would see is that those uh, pieces of agarose, which are a polysaccharide that comes from a type of seaweed, 
they create a web full of all these different holes and pores in that gel. So as an electric field moves molecules through that gel, they're gonna get hung up in sort of these pores in this webby nature. So the electric field is gonna try and pull those molecules through the gel, and that actual gel structure is gonna try and resist that. And small molecules are gonna be able to move really quickly through those holes and pores, but big molecules are gonna get stuck. We're gonna walk through this sort of piece by piece. So again, we added our dye into little wells in our gel. And I'm gonna switch to a split screen here. I wanna point this out. So you can see here that um, we have the different components of our electrophoresis kit. So on one side, we have our uh, negative electrode. On the other side, we have our positive electrode. And in the middle are these wells. And these wells really look uh, like pockets, and that's where we add our samples in. So today, the sample that we're adding in are our dyes, but you can also imagine that if we were gonna be using a uh, DNA gel electrophoresis setup, the sample we'd be adding in there would be DNA. The other thing that I wanna point out about this, again, is that we have electrodes on either side. And so again, the top here is our negative electrode, and the bottom here is our positive electrode. And you might be able to see that with this little positive symbol down here. And so in an electrophoresis setup, you have metal wires placed on either side of that gel that act as these two electrodes. And then you have a conductive material between them. So we have uh, this running buffer that I added right at the beginning, and that's gonna allow electricity to flow between these two electrodes. And again, I'm gonna zoom you in just a little bit here uh, with the camera. And so you can see these two wires coming off of the sides that are connected to our electro dams. Uh, and that's really all that this is. So this is plugged into a USB power source and we just have a positive side and a negative side. And that is gonna create the electric field that allows our samples to run through the gel. Let's get the camera back up in there. Okay. So, get our camera all settled again. So as you run this electric field, or as you create this electric field in, field in your gel electrophoresis setup, molecules that have a charge are going to be attracted to the opposite charge in that gel. So if you have positive and negative molecules in your gel, the positive molecules are going to be pulled towards the negative electrode and the negatively charged molecules are gonna be pulled towards the positive electrode. So by looking at which direction the molecules migrate, you're gonna be able to tell what their overall charge was. So again, positive will move towards negative and negative will move, will move towards positive. So you have one force that is pulling the molecules. So that is gonna be that sort of electric uh, charge. It's gonna be pulling them towards one side or the other. But remember, you also have that web of agarose in your gel, and that's going to be slowing them down. So small molecules are going to be uh, less resisted by the presence of that agarose, and big molecules, based on their size and their shape, are going to be more resisted by that agarose. So you sort of have these two forces pulling in uh, either direction on these molecules, one that's pulling them through the gel and one that is resisting that movement through the gel. And so you're gonna be able to separate these molecules, not just by their charge, but also by their size. So again, smaller molecules move through really easily, larger molecules will get stuck and have trouble moving through that web of gel. So let's look at some uh, mock gel results and see what we can tell from them. So again, your samples are gonna be placed in those wells. And here we have a couple of different bands of just some made up colors. Again, we're going to be using colored dyes in our lab today. And we turn the power on and the samples are going to be able to start traveling through that gel. Now, one of the things that I want to point out is that the dye molecules are going to move in a straight line towards those electrodes. And so we call these lanes. So it's kind of like runners on a track where a runner will stay in their own lane. So when we're talking about these things, the vocabulary that we're gonna be using is we're gonna be talking about all of these different lanes that held our samples. And each of those sort of horizontal stripes 
is a group of molecules that are all of the same size that move through the gel together. And we're going to call each one of those stripes a band. So this is some of the vocabulary that your students are going to be working with in this rainbow lab, but is the same vocabulary that they would be working with in a DNA gel electrophoresis lab. You have lanes and you have bands. So when you look at those bands, again, that means that all of the molecules in that area are about are of about the same size because they moved the same amount through the gel. So we're going to walk through this again really slowly. First thing we're going to look at is we're going to be able to tell the charge of molecules in a sample based on how they moved. So here in a sample, we can see that the green molecules moved towards the negative uh, electrode and the blue molecules moved towards the positive electrode. So the green molecules move towards the negative electrode, and that means that they are positively charged. And the blue molecules move towards the positive electrode, so that means that they are negatively charged. So that's the first thing that we can tell and that we're going to be able to tell when we look at our uh, gel results that are running really nicely on the gel next to me. I can't wait to show them to you in a second. We're going to be able to tell the charge. The other thing we're going to be able to tell really quickly is the composition of the molecules in that sample. So here we have two examples. So in our left lane, we have a single green band. And so that means that there was only one type of molecule, only one type of dye in that uh, tube that we had. So there was the composition, it was composed of only a single type of molecule. On the right, we have two bands in that lane, a yellow band and a purple band. And so this means that our original sample that we put in the well was composed of two types of molecules a yellow one and a purple one. Now, the final thing that we're going to be able to look at from our gel results is the comparative size of the molecules. Now, one of the things that I will note here is that, again, these molecules are being pulled in one direction or the other based on their charge. If they have a different magnitude of charge, that can impact how much they're pulled towards each side. But for today, we are going to assume that all of these molecules have the same net charge. So the only thing that is changing how far they run through the gel is just their size. So here on the left, in our left lane, we have two bands. So the purple molecules traveled farther through the gel than the blue molecules. And again, remember that we are measuring from the well. If you're used to doing DNA electrophoresis, you might be thinking of measuring from the top to the bottom. But here we loaded those in the middle of the gel so that we could tell uh, which charge they had, if they were positively or negatively charged. So we're measuring distance from the well. So the purple molecules traveled further through the gel than the blue molecules. So if we assume that the purple and the blue molecules have the same net charge, which we're doing for all of our dyes, we can tell that the purple molecules are smaller than the blue molecules because they were able to zip through all of those little holes and pores in the gel faster and move farther towards that negative electrode. On the other hand, we can also compare between lanes in a gel. And this is really important, especially if you have standards of known size, you can load a lane full of standards and then load some lanes of unknown sizes and you're able to compare them together because here, like in this example, when two bands like our purple and red band travel the same distance through the gel, you can assume that again, if they have the same net charge, that they also have about the same size. So this is really important when we think about DNA gel electrophoresis. Again, if we have standards and we're looking for a piece of DNA of known size, being able to compare between lanes is really, really important. Okay, so that was a lot of information. So to recap, we're going to be able to tell three things about our samples by looking at our results. We're going to be able to tell their charge based on whether or not they moved towards the positive or negative electrode. We're going to be able to tell our sample composition based on if there is just one band in a lane or two bands in a lane. And then we're also going to be able to tell their relative sizes based on how far each molecule moved through the gel. So these are the three things we're going to be looking at here, charge, composition, and size. And what I'm going to do is we're going to flip back over to our experiment here and we're going to zoom on into our gel. So I'm going to take our camera off the tripod and we're going to get nice and close to this gel here. And I hope that you can see this. Uh, so we have our red, orange, yellow, 
green, blue, and purple bands. Um, and I'm actually going to move these onto a piece of white paper so that you can see them just a little bit clearer. Okay, so I've added a piece of white paper under our gel here, and you can see our red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple dyes. And you can see that some of them have moved towards the negative electrode, and some of them have moved towards the positive electrode. You can hopefully see that this green band in the middle here, well, actually, it wasn't a green dye. You can see that it was composed of a blue and a yellow dye. And then our purple looks a little different from the others. So we're going to walk through the results of our gel uh, in a picture back in our PowerPoint. Okay, so here we can see a picture of these gels a little more zoomed in and a little less shaky from my hand. Again, we have our red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple lanes. And you can see that red, orange, yellow, green, and blue moved downwards. So they moved towards the positive electrode. Our purple band moved up towards our negative electrode. And we've got some differences in composition. So let's walk through this together. So first we're gonna look at that charge of each of our molecules. So again, the first five moved down. They moved towards our positive electrode. So that makes them negatively charged. And our purple band moved up towards the negative electrode. So that makes it positively charged. The next thing that we can look at is composition. So again, red, orange, yellow, blue, and purple. These all have just one band. So they must have been made up of just one type of molecule but our green lane is actually made up of two bands. You can see it's made up of a blue dye and a yellow dye. So our green has two dyes, whereas all the rest of them just have one dye. We can also talk a little bit about the relative size of each of these molecules. And again, we are assuming that they all have the same net charge. So the distance they move through the gel is indicative of their size. Remember, the farther a molecule moves through the gel, the smaller it is. And the larger it is, the more it'll get hung up in that gel. So the molecules that moved the farthest away from the uh, wells are our yellow molecules. So those are the smallest molecules we have. Our red and orange molecules, they're a little bit in the middle. So they're sort of our medium sizes. And our green, blue, and purple molecules, they're the closest to the wells. So they are the largest molecules that we have. Now, what you can also do is you can look here and you can see that, ah, in the red and the orange uh, lanes, they are different dyes, but they're about the same size. You can do some comparison between lanes as well. Same thing with our green lane where you can see that the yellow bands in the yellow lane and the green lane are the same size and the blue bands in the green lane and the blue lane are the same size. So you can do that comparison in between lanes. So I'm really excited that I got to introduce you to the Rainbow Lab today. I think there are sort of three big takeaways that I want you to sort of get from this presentation. The first is that you can use this Rainbow Lab to introduce your students to the theory and practice of electrophoresis. We just ran this together in under about 20 minutes. It's a really nice, simple way to get students hands-on with electrophoresis and really make sure that they understand those fundamentals that they can bring with them to other types of biotechnology. But even right here, they did real science. They characterized and, characterized and separated molecules. They were able to use a biotech tool to separate some molecules and learn something about them. And again, we were able to do this pretty quickly. We, you can do this entire lab in a single class period, or you can break it down even farther and be able to uh, have them assemble the bandit as well. If you want to learn more about that, we had a webinar on that last week presented by Katie, and we'll have links to that below as well as on our YouTube channel. So if you want more information about this Rainbow Lab, you can go to the link here. Uh, it'll also be in the description down below. You can also check out this QR code. And what you're going to be able to find when you go there is our lab guide, our teacher guide, our classroom slides, and some video resources on how to use Bandit. So we want to make sure that all of this is as easy and accessible for you as possible. So all of this is free. You can look at all of our resources before you buy anything so that you can check them out and see what you want to be able to implement in your classroom. So we have a number of dye electrophoresis labs that are either here or are coming soon. 
So you just got a sneak peek at our Molecular Rainbow Lab, which is available now. You can go and check it out on our website. But we also have a number of additional dielectrophoresis labs coming soon. So we're going to have our Microbe Hunters Lab as well as our Cat Genetics Lab. Now, what I will note is that these labs will run in any dye electrophoresis or any gel electrophoresis system. It doesn't just have to be Bandit. Bandit is just a way to make it nice and simple and affordable for your classroom. So you can use these labs in any gel electrophoresis setup that you might have. But again, we're a little bit partial to our brand new Bandit. We're also going to be introducing uh, a Mendel's Peas lab as well. Now, again, this was our Molecular Rainbow Lab. It is the second in a series of three webinars about our brand new Bandit STEM electrophoresis kit. So as I mentioned before, Katie led a Bandit STEM activity lab last week on May 9th. You can check that out. And next week on May 23rd, Bruce is going to go over our cat genetics lab. So you're going to see a sneak peek of an upcoming additional dye electrophoresis lab. You can check out all of those uh, at the links below and by subscribing to our YouTube channel. So thank you again for joining us today. I hope that you really enjoyed our quick run through of our Rainbow Lab. It's a really fun lab to be able to get students hands on with some true uh, biotech fundamentals and get them prepared to bring those skills onto other uh, biotech labs in their future. So thank you again for joining us. Please feel free to put any questions uh, that are remaining in the chat and have a wonderful rest of your day.